Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be fixing the air conditioning system on a 2008 Chevy Cobalt. There's a known weak issue on GM air conditioning systems around that time frame. So if you have this type of problem, you'll be able to fix it on the cheap instead of paying thousands of dollars. We're gonna get right into this. Let's get started. Predominant portion units obviously under the hood. That's not to say that aren't other problems that could be here. So we're gonna check everything. There are associated safety issues with this as well as environmental laws, so you have to be careful. Also, be a good steward of the environment and don't be dumping gas directly into the atmosphere So we get underway with all this. There's our service ports over here and over here. We could see those. GM fills us with the gas with the UV dye and we have topped this off with the gas with the UV dye. But it hasn't blown cold for a while, so I don't know what the state is, how much gas is in there, if there's any gas at all, what we expect to see with a UV lamp. So we're going to have to remove this cover here to gain access, but it does provide refrigerant charging information on a sticker. And there are several plastic pins that hold that in. Just the middle portion needs to be lifted up, and then the whole pin can be removed. So I'll do that now right quick and just pull them out. And we're not going to pull off the entire cover. We just want to deflect it away so we could get our test set down in there later when it's dark I'm just preparing now I've also cleaned up my gauges lubricated the fittings and I put a vacuum on them and closed them for a couple days and a hold in negative 30 pounds so that's good I'm gonna run the car with the AC on in the hopes that the compressor cycles a bit with whatever may be in the system so it's nighttime now and I got my protective goggles on and my UV lamp and I'm going around the entire circuit of the AC system and I'm looking for the dye to indicate a possible leak. And I'll tell you, it's been so long, I don't think I'm going to find anything. And the other problem is that there's a lot of stuff that glows, a lot of artifacts. So unless there's an active leak going on, I don't think I'm going to really find anything. But I am going to search everywhere. We can see I'm at the low side now. There's that return over there. There's a low side fitting right over there and I know from the factory they supplied dye but I don't know if the refill had dye in it so I don't know if I'm chasing nothing right now but I'm still gonna look anyway now we're up front having gained access to this area earlier looking for any leaks every area where there's a junction fitting connector requires special attention this includes connections to and the relief valve on the compressor Sure enough, a culprit of GM compresses the relief valve. Was this a high pressure event or do we have a leak in relief valve? We're gonna come back to this in a bit, but let's continue checking the rest of the car. The interior of the car was also checked for any possible glowing under UV in the vents, but I did not find any in the vents. Also the floorboards, but we had a couple of backups from the drain I checked as well, but I didn't see any there. That would have been an indication of where it could have been leaking. So we'll break out the gauges, take my protective cap off of the high pressure side, which is much easier to access than the low pressure side back here. We can see the high pressure fitting is larger than the low pressure fitting. So you can't put the hoses on wrong and high pressure is red and low pressure is blue. And to make sure the valves on both hoses are turned to the closed position, it's anti-clockwise. Same thing applies for the valves on the manifolds, but closing these are clockwise. It takes a little bit of effort getting the cold one on without removing this plastic cowling. It's a lot more fun getting it off when the engine is hot, but now it's on. On the high pressure side, there's a lot more room to work. And with both on, we can now turn it open in the clockwise position. I'm happy to say it's not fully empty. There's some pressure in the system. Let's turn on the con suit we got. We can see it fluctuating, constantly cycling. There's very little gas in the system, but it may be running enough to be able to do some leak tests. I'm going to go around with my ILD100 and have a look. I'm on AC Recirculate right now, so I don't inadvertently pull any gas leaks in from the engine compartment. I've set it to the foot area, and I'm just checking under the passenger foot area. Now I'm checking via defrost, and this is on the highest sensitivity. I'm just looking for any reading whatsoever. And this is just an attempt to get any leaks in the evaporator any way possible registering on this test set for any vent and i'm not finding any now very important i'm checking the low pressure fitting right here and i'm not getting anything it is not leaking very good the high pressure fitting however proves to be a problem because these fittings are terrible from ac delco 
and once you plug a connector to them, they go bad. And I put a little bit of pag oil on there so we can see it bubbling. Yeah, this is not good at all. This fitting needs to be replaced with the proper valve. Checking the relief valve in back of the compressor. We can see that this is where the leak is coming from. This relief valve is no good anymore, a known issue. Sometimes they could be loose, but if I put my thumb on it and then take a measurement after a time, I'll no longer get a reading, so I know the relief valve itself has failed. In situations like this, make your way down to your local service shop as soon as possible to have the refrigerant remaining in your car evacuated from the system before you continue instead of releasing it into the environment. This system is now empty. The gauges have moved slightly as the temperature outside is heated up about 15 degrees since I started recording. It's going to be a hot one today, probably in the hundreds. So I'm going to set this fitting to closed and remove it from the car. Now I'm going to slide the box end of a 16 mil all the way down to the base of this fitting, pass the fitting onto the pipe, and this is going to provide for stability as we work on the fitting itself. It's going to take a bit to push it all the way down and seat it properly. I rarely ever use a vice grip for such a task, but this part's being thrown away. I grab it firmly with a vice grip and holding the 16 to stabilize, I just break it free. Now I can finger turn the old fitting right off. If you could be doing a lot of AC work, they do make service valve sockets for this purpose. The old garbage fitting from AC Delco is now removed. We'll keep the 16 in position. The replacement valve, which is an actual Schrader valve, is from Dorman 800-955. The valve comes pre-fitted with the O-ring. A light application of PAG oil is applied to the O-ring. And then it is hand turned in as far as it can go with finger tightening, never using any tools to avoid cross threading. Grabbing both sets of flats with an adjustable wrench, I turn it while holding the 16 to secure the pipe and snug it down. And remember it's aluminum with an O-ring, so it's just snug down and I remove the 16. I also picked up a compressor relief valve on Amazon for about $40. Here's the GM part number. It's actually made in Japan. Very interesting, I found. Arrived in this bag. Comes with a rubber O-ring already on the other end, so we'll put a little bit of PAG oil on that O-ring before we install it. Removal and installation will be done with a 14 mil deep well. And I did about as good as I could do trying to hold the camera and unscrew this thing from the compressor at the same time. But everybody gets the idea how this works. So I loosened it until I could finger turn it. And then once I was able to finger turn it, I pulled it out of the compressor. With the surrounding area around the compressor cleaned, the new one is turned in by hand. As far as can go to full seat. Remembering that this valve has an O-ring, so once it's fully seated, all we have to do is just snug it down slightly. We don't have to go and break the compressor. So we're ready to go. I'm going to put my high-pressure fitting back on now. Make sure everything here is in the closed position. I've got my vacuum pump. And I'll be hooking my yellow line of the manifold to it. I'm going to open these fittings. I could turn on the pump first and open these fittings, or open these fittings and turn on the pump. It doesn't really matter right now because the system is empty. But now I'm opening the low side too. Now both of the valves on the manifold are opened up. And I turn on the vacuum pump. We wanted to pull a vacuum of NEG 30 PSI for about 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Really want to get as much moisture or whatnot out of here as possible. This one could pull about 29, that's it. I'm hoping for 29. It's 100 degrees outside, so I'll come back in 45 minutes. And yeah, we got 29 pounds of vacuum. Pretty good for this pump. Looking good. So we're going to go and shut off the valves on the manifold. Both of them. And only then the pump will be shut off. So I'm going to come back every half an hour for about an hour and a half and evaluate this vacuum see what we got going on but with the ever increasing temperature outside and the fact that it's not a perfect vacuum could skew the results so we'll see what we got
It's about an hour later. It's getting really hot outside, but I'm taking a look here. I think we're doing okay. Hasn't moved at all. I think we're ready to add some refrigerant to the system. Again, it clearly indicates we're going to be adding 410 grams of refrigerant. And my bottles are 340 grams, so I know I'm going to be using one entire bottle and part of a second bottle. But this bottle isn't auto-resealing, and this one is, so I'm going to use this one second. So I'm going to connect my T-fitting onto the yellow line. And I'm going to be absolutely sure that that tap is turned all the way outward. Give my bottle a little pre-shake. And then screw it onto the tap. I've got a digital thermometer. I'm going to stick in a vent and turn on the car. And yeah, it's 122 degrees in the car. 123, 24, 25. Got the AC running. Vents on max. I'm going to leave the high side closed and only open the low side. I'm going to turn the valve all the way in on the can to puncture the can, then bring the valve out, and then I'm going to open up this valve, and we're going to watch the Freon go in. We can see through the inspection hole that the refrigerant is flowing through into the system. The pressure is really high, but the compressor is going to kick on, and we can see the high sides increasing too slowly as well. Now I'm turning the bottle from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock and agitating the can every couple seconds following the manufacturer's recommendations and monitoring that inspection window to see that it's flowing as I look at the gauges and I can see that high side is coming up very slowly and that low side is dropping down very slowly. There I am, 12 and 3 o'clock, agitating the can, watching the inspection hole. I'm going to use this entire can. I know it's going to take the whole can so I'm not concerned on the second can that I'm going to be metering the amount of refrigerant going in. At this point, my camera's about to cut out due to the heat, so I'll show you what happens when this can empties. So when nothing more was in the inspection hole and the can felt empty, I then closed this low side valve right over here. Before doing so, however, I did hold the can entirely upside down, shake it and agitate it, and check that inspection window because it would still start flowing again, making sure I got all of the contents of the can before closing that just like this, shaking it upside down. And then finally, once that was done and it was fully empty, I was able to unscrew this can and remove it. There was no pressure. Obviously making sure that that low pressure side was completely closed. Now I'm on the second can and this is gonna be done with a scale. I've loaded up all the connectors and hoses on this can just as the first to get the correct weight of everything included on this can, shake it up a bit. And now I'm gonna place everything on the scale, just supporting the hose as I'll be supporting it while I do the charging. I'm just gonna turn this in so gas will flow. I'll be ready to go once I get the math done. Turning it all the way in on this one and then bringing it out ever so slightly. Now we're ready. I'm turning on my scale. And we have a combined weight of 465 grams as it sits. So the card takes 410 and I already put in 340. So I have a remainder of 70 that I need. And this can weighs 465. If I pull 70 from it, I'll be left with 395 when I have the correct amount left. So that's what we're going for on the scale. So I'm doing the same thing as I did before, except I'm using the low pressure valve to open and close to meter the flow of the refrigerant into the system as I lift the can to agitate and put it back down. And I keep reweighing it until I come up with that exact weight that I want that tells me I've removed 70 grams from this can. With this inclusion of 70 grams, I now have 410 grams of refrigerant in the system. And 66 degrees looks cold, but it's not very impressive in a blazing hot driveway with the blasting sun. Let's get this thing on the road. Now both fittings on the car will be turned to the closed position. The slow side fitting against the hot engine is a lot harder to work with. Once this one is set to close though, the low side fitting can be removed. And the high side fitting is very important that the manifold is opened up beforehand because there's a lot of pressure in this hose. No bubbles in my high side service port. I removed some of my cleaner that I used for checking. And cap it back on. Being sure to put the cap back on the low side as well. 50 degrees, max fan, no recirculate. And it's 98, 99 degrees outside. I've got 99 degrees with recirculate on. Max fan showing 43 degrees inside. Dropping down to 42. 
and you can see I paused the camera for just a minute. Recirculate got down to 39.9 degrees. I'm gonna call that a success. It's 100 degrees outside, people. And that concludes this video on the Cobalt AC repair in the driveway, especially dealing with known points of failure. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?